He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Welcome. We are so pleased to have you with us this morning on this beautiful Easter morning. I don't want to, you know, I'm not suspicious, but it's not snowing. Oh, so many times I remember walking out of here on an Easter morning. I'm like, really? So yay. And it's even early this year. So we, again, are so happy to have you with us worshiping this morning, whether you're here in the building or on our live stream. We, I, for those of you that missed it, you missed an amazing breakfast this morning. There was bake, well, you can smell it. There was bacon and sausage and pancakes and three different kinds of fruit and whipped cream. And those of us that were here really appreciate it. So thank you to all the volunteers, all the youth, and to Jeremy, who put this amazing breakfast on for us this morning. It was lovely. Yes, please. <laughs> It was wonder. Oh, and coffee and juice and tea were also there, lest I forget all the goodness. Today is an intergenerational service. I hope you saw the pizza activity boxes. There's a little treat in there for my friends, so make sure you grabbed one. Um, we are having our intergenerational today on Easter instead of the first of the month. Uh, so next week, we will be back downstairs like we usually are. But we wanted to be all together on this Easter Sunday to celebrate. Evelyn has an announcement. Well, not an announcement so much as some important information to share. Thank you, Don. Yes, um, here at First Baptist, we have three congregational sung responses. And some of you probably have them memorized if you come all the time. Uh, but some of you might need some words or some music. The reason I'm, I'm introducing this to you is because it's renewed. So there's a laminated sheet in front of you in the pew back. And we've just, thanks to Gord Adnams for just making the music nice and new and shiny, we have all three of our responses. The Gloria Patri, which we bring back today on Easter Sunday, New doxology written by our own Marco Adria, so we have the words for it and the music right there, and then our congregational amen. I just wanted to draw attention to that. I'm pretty proud of getting that together, and thank you to our admin staff as well for preparing and laminating and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Many of you know this month we've been collecting things to donate to the Bissell Center, and we have a blue box at the back of the church in the foyer. So if you have anything that you would like to donate this upcoming week, I believe we were just doing it for this month. We may extend it if you have a few more things to donate so that we can uh, take that and drop that off to Bissell Center. Last but not least, photos. So many of you are here and looking especially lovely today. So if you would like your picture taken for our directory that we are doing for the church, uh, pictures will be taken on the landing going up to the balcony. And if you can't make it up to the balcony, Gordon will gladly come down on the main floor to take your picture if stairs are a struggle. Uh, I do have a touch of bad news. Anyone who had their pictures taken last week Due to a technical malfunction, um, we need to redo your pictures again. Unfortunately, um, if you had them taken last week, you'll need to have them taken again. And due to that, we are extending the photo shoot opportunities, so they will still happen April 7th and April 14th if you don't want them taken today and another day is better for you. And last but not least, we are finally updating our directory, and that means we need a big old family photo. So at the end of our service, during Gerald's postlude, if y'all would make your way up here on the platform, we're going to have a big church family picture taken, and we would love to have you in us in it. And I know some of you have Easter dinner plans, perhaps, but we promise it will be a short photo uh, as long as we all come up as quickly as we can, but don't stampede one another. That, that wouldn't be good. So yes, just a reminder, immediately following the service, a picture up front on the platform with everyone, if you would. And now, in the midst of the joy and the hubbub and full bellies from yummy breakfasts, 
Let us take a moment and pause and take a deep breath and prepare to joyously worship together. Beloved church, behold the reign of our God. Jesus our Lord has conquered the grave. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let this place resound with joy. Christ is risen. Alleluia.
is the day of resurrection. Let us be glorious in splendor for the celebration, and let us embrace one another. Now all things are filled with light, heaven and earth and all places under the earth. All creation celebrates the resurrection of Christ. Lord, hear us as we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Won't you join me in the prayer of confession and then sit for a few moments to reflect and then listen well to the words of assurance. God of new life, forgive our death-dealing ways, our careless thoughts, our hurtful deeds, our words which bring pain and sorrow. Reorient our hearts and refresh us with the power of your new life. Jesus, the stone is rolled away and you go ahead of us. Lead us in the way of deep, lasting life. Friends, hear the good news. Jesus Christ came into the world to save us all. Today, sisters and brothers, friends in Christ, know that you are forgiven. The first reading this morning is from Psalm chapter 118, verses 1 to 4 and 14 to 24, pages 625 and 626 in your pew Bible. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. 
Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. flip over your order of service, you'll find a responsive prayer that we can read together. Love of Jesus, fill us. Peace of Jesus, flood us. Touch of Jesus, warm us. 
O Savior, in your risen life, take us with you for the love of God and the love of the world. Wondering where Owen is. We're praying together. There you are. I couldn't see you way back there. <laughs> there you go. Owen and I this morning are going to pray together the prayers of the people. Please join us in prayer. We pray for the life of our world, for our loved ones those that we know and hold in our hearts. Help us care for every life. Through your love, may we walk alongside the voiceless. God, God of love, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For those who teach us, our teachers at school and church, our family at home and in all places we learn and grow. Help us to listen and pray with patience as we learn from God and one another. God, God our, our teacher, teacher receive our, our prayer. prayer. For those who lead us, give the leaders of our nations, towns, communities, and homes wisdom to serve people of all ages in love and peace. Give us all the words and actions to share your love in the world. God, God who, who guides, guides us, receive our prayer. For the sick, the invaded, and the poor, we pray for access that meets the needs of those who do not have enough. For nutritious food, safe housing, loving relationships, and all of the things that help us thrive. God, God of, of the, the vulnerable, vulnerable receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. 
for ourselves. Thanksgiving for play, for music that moves us, and all the good things you bless us with. Help us to live and learn from the stories of others and respond to the needs of neighbors as you have taught us. God, who walks with us, receive our prayer. God, we thank you for always being with us. Open and transform our hearts so that we might connect more deeply with the needs of others and be moved by your love and care in the world. Help us to keep courage as we learn to share and give. Amen. The second reading is from the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. If the children in the sanctuary feel comfortable coming forward and sitting up front, Dawn's going to be sitting up front here too, so you are welcome to sit up front with us for a few minutes. Okay, this is fun. We'll, um, we're going to talk about the story that we just heard, Barb read. And it's, Jesus' friends are sad in this story. So that's a little unfortunate for us. But they're alarmed. And then that last sentence was, they were afraid. It's a tough story for such a happy day. But... We all know that sometimes life is sad. Things don't go our way. I was thinking to my 11-year-old self. This was me when I was 11. I'll have you know that these big wire rim glasses are cool again. <laughs> it's totally come around. 
So my 11-year-old self, I was thinking of this dude, and maybe you could hold that for the kids. And I can remember hearing from my older brothers and sisters, and they told me that my mom was really sick. And so I was sad. But I was surrounded by a family who told me, it's going to be okay. We're going to do the best that we can do and get the best care for mom. And then my sisters and brothers said, you know, we love you and you're going to be okay. When we're afraid, it's good to know that voices around us tell us that they love us and that we're going to be okay. This is what Jesus' friends needed on that day when they were so sad. Here they are. Jesus' friends, sad, walking to the graveside. And then one of them says, the huge stone that covered the hole in the mountain has been rolled away. What? They thought Jesus' body was going to be inside the tomb. But instead... They see light. And they see light that scares them. They are afraid and worried. But then they see the lighted young man. And the lighted young man says these words, Do not fear. Do not fear. And that's, we know that that's not a magical word or a magical phrase that makes everything feel wonderful right away. But it helps. Do not fear. And then the bright young man also says, Jesus is going ahead of you. And that's where I want us to think a bit about those two phrases. Do not fear. And Jesus is going ahead of you. Because I hope that when you feel scared or fearful or worried, maybe someone in your family is sick, or maybe you're at school or in the playground and someone's picking on you, or maybe you're at work and someone's picking on you, Might you hear that phrase, do not fear. You're not alone. Jesus is going ahead of you. And so as we're thinking and talking about Jesus on this Easter Sunday, you're each going to get one of these pictures of the bright young man. And on the back of that picture, uh, there's a few questions. And one of the questions is, have you ever been afraid? And maybe you'll think about a time when you're afraid. And then one of the questions is, was there someone there to tell you, do not fear? Was there someone there to tell you, do not fear? Or was there someone there to tell you, God will be with you? So I want you to take these with you today and maybe with your families you might be talking about Jesus and you might be talking about the bright young man who is sitting at Jesus' tomb and in the midst of your conversation you might share some stories about how are you going to make it when you feel fearful or how do you feel when God is with you? Happy and not alone. That's a good answer. Those words can start the way for conversations with friends and parents this day as we talk about Jesus. And we talk about the bright young man who says, 
do not fear. Jesus is going ahead of you. You will not be alone. Let's pray together as we think about God being with us this day and in the days ahead. Lord Jesus, we pray blessings on our children. We pray that we would be the voices of assurance that would echo what the bright young man said. That we would be the voices that say, do not fear, it's going to be okay. Or we might be the voices that tell stories about how God is with us and how God will be with us in the days ahead. Surround these children with love, kindness, and voices of companionship and care. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can return back to your parents or your grandparents or your guardians. As we continue to respond to God this morning through worship, we do so through sharing of our resources. We do that through our tithes and offerings. Your gifts sustain the work of this community of faith in these walls, in this city, and across the world. So we are grateful. You can do that in many ways. Contribute through using the QR code on this pink card. You can stop in, mail it in, call it in, drop in here, and Bring your tithes and offerings that way, and you can do it the old school way, and that is through the offering plate this morning. If you have an automatic withdrawal, you can use this, this purple card and put that in if you'd like to participate in that way this morning. Thank you for giving.
God of abundance, God of mercy, God of comfort and peace, we thank you. Thank you for these gifts given for this community. May they be used to continue to bring your light to the world. Amen. And thank you, Casey, for joining us on that glorious hymn, and thank you all for your great singing today. How wonderful. Just a reminder before our words of sending and blessing, somehow um, we're going to get all of you up here. <laughs> so um, as we recess, just give us a moment, the choir will come back in and just maybe tidy things up up here, but we want y'all to come on up, and we usually are on the entire platform, so please join us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you.
If you need a lighted one card, even if you're not a child, you might want to reflect on Jesus and his accompaniment with us in the season of Easter. The good news is that Easter for Christians and the Christian calendar is that it's a 50-day season of remembering the risen Christ and also proclaiming his presence and his power to the world around us. So we pray that you'd go from here renewed and strengthened. Those who've gathered in this place, those who join us live stream today and in the days ahead, that you might listen for the voices of assurance, that you might look for the blessings that await us in these days of Easter, and then that you might be those voices of assurance, that you might be the bodies and the hands and the feet of Jesus, giving life and hope and mercy and love to this city and even to the ends of the earth. Amen.
Keep on, keep on squeezing in, keep on squeezing in. And there's room behind the communion table.